Dear Katie, so much has changed, even just since you've been away. We moved into this house. I'm in a new school, and my big sister being gone for a year doesn't make it any easier. It's weird hanging out with girls. Daniel was around ever since I was little, and other girls? I don't know. Lonnie came over today, but everything was different. She... Lonnie brought her hair dye over today. She said, I need to fix these roots. Think you could help? Dying hair is weirdly intimate. I don't know if I've touched someone else's scalp before. That's pretty intimate, right? It felt intimate. We looked in the mirror together after, and I expected her to say something about how it looked crappy or good or whatever. But that's when she said, Oh my god. You are so lucky you finished high school before we moved into this house. So, it's the first day of school, and there I am, introducing myself to the class. And I say that I just moved into the house on Arbor Hill. All of a sudden, every kid in the room turns and just stares like I suddenly transformed into a mutant. I just stood there, wishing pretty hard for a rewind button. Because now... At Todd's brother's place after the show, there was only a futon to sleep on, so Lonnie and I shared it. The lights went out. I was turned toward her, my eyes started to adjust, and then I could see she was looking at me, too. In the dark, she smiled. You know that feeling where the first moment you see someone, it's like they have a big gold star around them, and you have to get to know them? Well, there's this girl. I think she's a senior. She's usually dressed kind of punk. But sometimes I see her in this, like, army uniform. And she's always drawing in this notebook, looking so intense. I had no idea how I would ever, like, have an excuse to talk to her. Till I noticed she and her... When you live in one place your whole life, your next door neighbor is kind of like your default friend. And Daniel only got weirder over the years. So moving... So you know what they say about the best laid plans of mice and men? Yeah, turns out it applies to Street Fighter 2. At least I worked up the courage to walk into the 7-Eleven and ask for a turn, but all that practice at home did not exactly translate in the wild. So after I was finished getting my butt kicked... It's different now. I mean, we still hang out all the time like before. But now when no one else is around... Well, you know... So you could say we're dating. But it's secret. Secret dating? I don't know. I mean, I guess that's the real difference. I'm so stupid sometimes. I was telling Lonnie that I got into my college summer program thing. And I was all... Todd's band lost their singer. Todd said he sucked. Lonnie said he got sick of Todd's shit, and he was complaining about needing a new singer. So Lonnie was like, I can sing. And they were all kind of like, you can? And she was like, probably. But she's been rehearsing with them for like a week now, and I finally got to see them play in Todd's basement today. And she's actually really amazing. I feel so proud when she's on stage. It's incredible being in awe of someone you love. So... I don't get Lonnie sometimes. Like, her band, and our zine, and her hair, and everything are all anti-authority. But I watch her in JROTC, and she's doing drills in perfect formation. Following orders, no question. And there's all this stuff in the news about don't ask, don't tell. Like, she's going to join the army and then have to... lie? About who she is? She said, they don't need to know what they don't need to know. Like it was no big deal. This from the girl who trashed her locker to, like, defend... I had an... interesting talk with mom and dad tonight. One you were never gonna need to have. I mean... You've known, right? Lonnie had her going away show with her band tonight. 
She's so incredible on stage. When she was singing, I could practically forget everything. That we only had 48 hours left. That I don't know what comes next. That I can't live without her. Then she dedicated the last song to me. We agreed our last night together would be our happiest ever. And we'd forget tomorrow was going to come at all. It worked for a while. We had a good time seeing Oscar off. Then ran up to the attic to look through our photos. To find one for Lonnie to take with her. And looking... Daniel finally came over to get his game. I'd been dreading it. But he brought this story... I asked Lonnie what she had to do to get ready to ship out for basic training. She said, not a lot really. You're not allowed to bring anything with you. You have no possessions. No contact with the outside world while you're in basic. You just train hard every day, and then you deploy from there. So, they'll just send her away. To who knows where. The other side of the country. The other side of the world. My mind, like can't process it. She's really going to be gone. Just gone. The sunset light in this house is the saddest thing I've ever seen. I just want to sleep. When I'm in the attic, it almost feels like Lonnie could still be here. She's just downstairs. I'm just waiting to hear her pull down the hatch and come running up. Maybe I'll go up to the attic and wait. Meow, meow. Meow, 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 Sometimes you just have to lie to mom and dad. Like when Lonnie asked me to see a band with her and stay over at her friend's place in the city after. That's a lie to mom and dad situation. But it was so worth it. The girls on stage were just so loud and real and awesome. And everybody... Oh my god. Katie... I fell asleep in the attic, in Lonnie in my old spot, and I missed the first two calls. I just barely caught the third one before the machine got it. And it was Lonnie, on a payphone. She'd been on the bus to basic, and she said she couldn't, she couldn't think of anything. Dear Katie, so much has changed, even just since you've been away. 
we moved into this house. I'm at a new school. And my big sister being gone for a year doesn't make it any easier. It doesn't feel real. But I'm not gonna let it phase me. It's weird hanging out with girls. Daniel was around ever since I was little, and other girls? I don't know. But being around Lonnie is like, instantly just right. I gave her the grand Psycho House tour, and took my revenge on Super Nintendo. And it was like, I don't know, I finally found someone I feel normal around. I drove her home and she gave me this tape and said, you have... Lonnie came over today, but everything was different. Lonnie brought her hair dye over today. She said, I need to fix these roots. Think you could help? Dying hair is weirdly intimate. I don't know if I've touched someone else's scalp before. It's pretty intimate, right? It felt intimate. We looked in the mirror together after, and I expected her to say something about how it looked crappy or good or whatever. But that's when she said, You're so beautiful. And she was looking at me. Right in that moment, I wanted to say something, but I waited. Oh my god, you are so lucky you finished high school before we moved into this house. So, it's the first day of school, and there I am, introducing myself to the class. And I say that I just moved into the house on Arbor Hill. All of a sudden, every kid in the room turns and just stares like I suddenly transformed into a mutant. I just stood there, wishing pretty hard for a rewind button. Because now maybe nobody knows my name, but they all know who I am. At Todd's brother's place after the show, there was only a futon to sleep on, so Lonnie and I shared it. The lights went out. I was turned toward her, my eyes started to adjust, and then I could see she was looking at me, too. In the dark. You know that feeling where the first moment you see someone, it's like they have a big gold star around them, and you have to get to know them? Well, there's this girl. I think she's a senior. She's usually dressed... When you live in one place your whole life, your next-door neighbor is kind of like your default friend. And Daniel only got weirder over the years. So moving away has been a good excuse to, like... So you know what they say about the best laid plans of mice and men? Yeah, turns out it applies to Street Fighter too. At least I worked up the courage to walk into the 7-Eleven and ask for a turn, but... It's different now. I mean, we still hang out all the time like before. But now when no one else... I'm so stupid sometimes. I was telling Lonnie that I got into my college summer program. Todd's band lost their singer. Todd said he sucked. Lonnie said he got sick of Todd's shit. And he was complaining about needing a new singer. So Lonnie was like, I can sing. And they were all kind of like, you can? And she was like, probably. But she's been rehearsing with them for like a week now. And I finally got to see them play in Todd's basement today. And she's actually really amazing. I feel so proud when she's on stage. I don't get Lonnie sometimes. Like, her band, and our zine, and her hair, and everything are all anti-authority. But I watch her in JROTC, and she's doing drills in perfect formation. Following orders, no question. And there's all this stuff in the news about don't ask, don't tell. Like, she's going to join the army and then have to... lie? About who she is? She said, they don't need to know what they don't need to know. Like it was no big deal. I had an... interesting talk with mom and dad tonight. One you were never gonna need to have. I mean... Lonnie had her going away show with her band tonight. She's so incredible on stage. When she was singing, I could practically forget. Everything. That we all...
We agreed our last night together would be our happiest ever. And we'd forget tomorrow was going to come at all. It worked for a while. We had a good time seeing Oscar off. Then ran up to the attic to look through our photos. To find one for Lonnie to take with her. And Daniel finally came over to get his game. I'd been dreading it. But he brought this story with him that I wrote when we were little. I asked Lonnie what she had to do to get ready to ship out for basic training. She said, not a lot really. You're not allowed to bring anything with you. You have no possessions. No contact with the outside world while you're in basic. You just train hard every day, and then you deploy from there. So, they'll just send her away. To who knows where. The other side of the country. The other side of the world. My mind, like, can't process it. But she's really going to be... gone. Just gone. Katie, you know how mom and dad are. Not exactly super open-minded about things. It feels like every minute I don't spend with Lonnie, I spend worrying about them finding out about us. And what would happen if they did? You know dad's joke about the nunnery that he'd tell whenever he brought boys around the old house? Meow, meow. Meow, meow. Meow. Sometimes you just have to lie to mom and dad. Like when Lonnie asked me to see a band with her and stay over at her friend's place in the city after. That's a lie to mom and dad's situation. But it was so worth it. The girls on stage were just so loud and real and awesome and everybody was moving together like one huge tide of sound between two songs Lonnie leaned over and said the sunset light in this house is the saddest thing I've ever seen I just want to sleep when I'm in the attic it almost feels like Lonnie could still be here She's just downstairs. I'm just waiting to hear her pull down the hatch and come running up. Maybe I'll go up to the attic. And wait. Oh my god. Katie. I, I fell asleep in the attic. In Lonnie in my old spot. And I missed the first two calls. I just barely caught the third one before the machine got it. And it was Lonnie. On a payphone. She'd been on the bus to basic, and she said she couldn't... She couldn't think of anything but me.
So, Christmas Duck. Christmas Duck um, is a fan favorite. He Hi, I'm Steve Gaynor. I'm the co-founder of the... Hello, my name is Kate Craig, and I was creating a lot of the environment assets for the game. Uh, not all of them, some of them... Oh man, mom handwriting. We went through a lot of... Hi, I'm Chris Remo, the composer on Gone Home. In my commentary tracks, I'm going to be talking a little bit about... Um, this is where you find the first half of Sam's Locker, or... Hi, this is Corin Tucker from Heavens to Betsy. And Heavens to Betsy was a band that... When you're... When, when you're... When you're putting, like... Uh, so these are all the VHS tapes, or most of them. My name is Sarah Grayson, and I do the voice of Sam Greenbrier in Gone Home. Um, currently based out of Portland, Oregon. So, uh, right around where <laughs> the Fulbright Company is from, which uh, is part of, I guess... Most of the bookshelves in the house are filled with undifferentiated books. I mean, they're not undifferentiated, but they're... So here's one of Dad's pulpy... The doors were actually one of the hardest things in the game to get working correctly, and, uh, I know... Here we have Fresh Magazine, which is... Inside of this uh, file folder, um, you find the first uh, combination code in the game. Um, this code goes to Dad's lock filing cabinet, and it's 0451, um, which is a bit of a tradition slash in joke uh, amongst. I mean, it's not really an in joke. It's just a. It's just an inter. Sam's story uh, slash school assignment call. I feel like one of the best bits of advice <laughs> was actually from the, the Fulbright team before going in to do the first recording. And it was... Composing the ambient exploration tracks definitely ended up being the weirdest part of creating music. One of the uh, larger assets that we needed for the basement to really give it character and personality... Oh man, this thing. So two things. Uh, one, you know, there, were, there was kind of this. So there's this little scrap of of paper that's hidden under this bedside table. Uh, Put back is the feature. There's a little bit of concern on my part before any of this got started that you never know how much liberty you're going to be given, and how much over direction you're going to get because somebody hears it like a specific specific way and if you deviate from that at all it you're just going to keep doing the line over and over and over again like 50 times until it's right the music for gone home was mainly composed over two separate periods fanzines i mean that's one of the things that we started doing right away was doing these riot girl fanzines and everyone so earlier in all of the sliding doors that you see in the game are actually from a code perspective, drawers. Uh. You know, it's really about the ideals that we were trying to um, get across in our... When you put out any sort of content about your game online, uh, whether it's screenshots or whether it's... Um. For a long time, the kitchen was not going to be mid-renovation the way that it is. Definitely the second half was... Oh! 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 You found an Easter egg! Who found it? You, you found, found it. it! This is the best! <laughs> you looked up! You're... No one in a, in a first-person game looks up! Because there's no... So... I'd already played through the first full half of Gone Home before I started composing any music, which was really important to understand how the game felt and played and looked. Really early on... We didn't really give Kate very specific direction. So you want to talk about this fucking jazz mug? <laughs> Nobody wants to talk about the jazz mug. Well, it's except the for worst. Carla. It, I hate it. It's the worst. <laughs> that, was, that was such a common theme yeah. when we were putting, when we were like approving assets or making yeah. stuff uh, visually for Gone Home. Is just like, oh my god, that's hideous. I fucking hate it. We're putting it in the game, <laughs> yeah. Because like so just like that. awful '90s furniture and like the like the... we see it in the you know a secondhand store or like or you just see on it the in internet. the Sears catalog like, we yeah, bought. It's just like... the Goodfellow High School jacket and the logo. 
Yeah, the, the biggest purpose of the card was, yeah, to, to say, oh, Sam is 17, you know, if you look for this thing. But there's so much... The fact that there are speedruns for our game makes me really happy, and the fact that, you know, that the 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 any percent speedrun, a.k.a. you don't have to pick up anything, just get to the end is fast. We never really discussed the idea. I had seen Bikini Kill and Bratmobile play, their first show at the North Star Surf Club. Around So these are stereographic? One of the assets that I really like to create in the game was Yeah, I ended up being pretty happy with I was uh, one of the hosts of the Idle Thumbs video game podcast for a year. Um, Barf Burger is enjoyed by a lot of... Well, I mean, I've always... One of the most comforting things in the world to me is having somebody, like, brush my hair or stroke my head. Like... The boxes of tampons uh, that you can find in the washrooms around the house, uh, they weren't originally on the list of items that needed to be modeled, but... The life cycle of the condom. That's... The, that's, that's not really... One of my favorite things that came out during development was someone, uh... Another board game! So th there's a lot less density in the house than there would be in a real house. Like, if you look around your house, there's just junk piled everywhere, probably. <laughs> Maybe like, it's just our house. I think it's most house. <laughs> oh, you're um, right. <laughs> almost none of the events, the little events uh, in the game, are scripted. Um, as I really enjoyed playing Gone Home. Um, I have to say it was pretty exciting to find the Heavens to Betsy tape, you know? Uh, okay, the Wildfire book. Oh man, look at this thing. Yeah, I, uh, this was another one of those situations in which I totally felt like a weird creepo when I was doing research, <laughs> and there was a lot of, uh, really horrifying- You wanna talk about a place for Christmas duck? This is where Christmas duck goes. Oh. I think this is one where- it, it's one of those things where we had always wanted to, well, so this is the Katie, I'm so sorry that I can't be there to see you in person, that I can't tell you all this myself, but I hope as you read this journal and you think back that you'll understand why I had to do what I did and that you won't be sad.